Hello ladies and gentlemen, Tiveron here, and welcome back to some more Eternal Laddering. This time we're going to be playing Chalice. Uh, this is my particular build of the deck. There are many ways to build it. Some things are sort of ubiquitous, but anyway, it's mainly a control deck that seeks to grind out your opponent through card advantage and sheer attrition. We run four Seek powers to fix our faction base since we are a three faction deck. Four Desert Marshal to silence and surprise ambush things. For Kothon the Far Watcher, a card with a lot of utility, a uh, two cost, two three with endurance, so it can attack and block at the same time. And we can pay six to make it flying and play a four four owl with flying. For Temple Scribes to gain us a little bit of life and draw a card, the life gain's negligible, the card draw is what's most important. To Vanquish, kill a unit with four attack or more. Four Amber Acolytes, just another creature that also fixes our power base. Four Combre Healer gives us more staying power. A three cost 2-2 two, two that heals us and buffs one of our units. Island's Choice is a good utility card. Three cost, negate an enemy spell with cost four or more, or kill an attacking enemy unit with four or more attack. Four Wisdom of Elders, pretty simple. Three cost, draw two cards, it is a fast spell. I'm running one Archive Curator, a 1-4 four for 4 with flying, and when we summon it, we silence another unit. Two Auric Rune Hammer. This is a relic weapon, so we play this on ourselves, and it allows us to attack units, or if there are no units on the board, attack our opponent directly. What's great about Auric Rune Hammer is when we summon it, we're invulnerable to damage that turn. For Crystal and Chalice, which is the namesake of the deck, this is what allows us to just grind our opponents out. For Cost Relic, once per turn, we may pay two and exhaust one of our units with two attack or less and give it plus two, plus two, and draw a card. For Harsh Rule, just your ubiquitous board wipe, five cost, kill all units. For Lumen Defender, this is one that may seem a little strange at first glance, but it does everything that we want to do in this deck. It is a 1-5, so it holds the ground incredibly well, and the fact that it has deadly helps out with that even more, and when we summon it, we gain 5 life. And finally, 3, Channel the Tempest. This is a big spell, as you can see, 8 cost. We draw 3 cards, then deal damage equal to the number of cards in our hand. We can do that to a unit or to our opponent. Then our power base is 3 Time Sigils, 2 Justice Sigils, 3 Combray Banner, 4 Seed of Progress, 3 Elysium Banner, 4 Seed of Wisdom, and 2 Seed of Order. That is the deck list. Let's play a few games. Okay, uh, this is a bit of an awkward hand. I think we're going to send it back. This is a bit better. We get to go turn to Temple Scribe. We've got most of the factions that we need. We do eventually need four Primals and two Justice, but we have time to get those, hopefully. Let's go ahead and draw a card. All right, that's fine. Not really sure what our opponent's doing yet. We do see Shadow Faction. The ladder's really heavy with a lot of super aggressive decks right now. Uh, we don't know if they're running a second or third faction yet. I would assume that they are. You don't see many decks on the ladder that are mono shadow. Maybe they're hurting for, yeah, hurting for faction just period. If we had two justice, we would start smashing our opponent's face, but we don't, so we'll play out our chalice and attack. And, yeah, they've had enough. Uh, kind of hard to win a game when you're stuck on two and just can't draw any more faction cards. Or power cards, I mean. Okay, I think this is keepable. It's a little bit slow, but I think it's fine. We'll play out our banners since they're going to be depleted as long as we don't have a unit in play. Hmm. We could play the Far Watcher this turn. 
Uh, yeah, I think we'll do that. Our opponent's showing Thelm Colors right now, which is generally a controlling deck. So getting on the board as quickly as possible is a good thing. We'll play our banner and attack. Then we're going to seek power first. And we want Primal since we've got all of the time and justice faction that we need for, for basically ever. There's nothing in our deck that costs more than two of each of those. Alrighty, again, our opponent has gotten power screwed here. I think I'm going to take the turn off casting creatures to play our Wisdom of the Elders at the end of our opponent's turn. Well, they finally hit a third power. Alrighty. Ah, good. There we go. That's what I wanted. Uh, let's go ahead and attack. If this guy lives till we hit six, we can go ahead and use their ultimate. Uh, as it is, I think I'm going to draw an extra card. And... We'll, we'll play out our Combray Healer. Try to take advantage of our opponent being power light for the moment. All right, fell on a Bloodcaster. Hmm... Unfortunately, we didn't draw our sixth power that turn. Otherwise, we could have ultimated Kothion. However, I think we do just keep attacking here. Unfortunately, at this point, I feel like our opponent could stabilize. Uh, let's play our Lumen Defender and pass. If they go Withering Witch, which makes all our um, toughnesses one, and then Black Sky Harbinger, which deals one to each enemy, and they gain a life, then they would just wipe our side of the board. Hmm. All right, still keep attacking. Get our last... Primal Sigil there. That way if we draw Channel the Storm, we'll be able to cast it. Um, trying to walk a thin line between overextending and getting our opponent dead as quickly as possible. Would love to draw a Crystalline Chalice. That would probably allow us to put this game away, but it looks like we're not going to get to do that. I'm going to start sacrificing these Temple Scribes at this point. Also probably going to silent this thing this turn so that they can't use its ultimate. They are two power off of doing that though, so. Alright, permafrost. Slows us down a bit. Let's go ahead and silence this thing. Alright, we are drawing all the power and our opponent is drawing none. Let's go ahead and swing with these. And pass. Well, they finally hit six. Hmm, no blocks. Are they playing the minus five defense? Nope, Black Sky Harbinger, okay. Well, they are gaining a bunch of life. We are going to silence that thing. And Vanquish isn't very good against this deck, but we shall keep on pounding in there with what we've got. No blocks. We're we going to see a second Harbinger. That would be really bad. And we are. I think this game is going to slip away from us. I mean, that helps potentially. Not sure I want to use it quite yet.
Opponent does still have a lot of cards in hand. Huh. All right. Let's let's do it now. Okay. Hmm. Maybe I don't want to now. I can play Kothon and ultimate him immediately. Yeah, let's do that. I honestly did not expect my opponent to block at that point. Alright, permafrost on our owl. Uh, we won't block. They can't permafrost uh, Kothion. Anything with endurance, endurance cannot be stunned, exhausted, or permafrosted. That's interesting. Let's see if they're willing to block again. Their life total's going up and up. So I didn't figure they would be. Alright, harsh rule then. They have a fast spell in hand, otherwise it wouldn't have paused there like that. Um, I could play Rune Hammer and hit them, but if they've got another Black Sky Harbinger, then they'll just destroy my Rune Hammer. Of course, Rune Hammer's just not much use in this match in any case. This is just a really bad matchup for us. A lot of our stuff doesn't line up well with what the Felon Control deck's trying to do. We're built mainly to grind out uh, aggressive and mid-range type decks. Vara Fate Touched is a problem. At least we can kill her. But Black Sky Harbinger does come back and gets rid of our Rune Hammer. We'll definitely deal with her before our opponent gets a chance to cast another spell and get more minions back out of the graveyard or units. So many different card games, so many different terminologies for things that you play and attack your opponent with. Desert Marshal. I mean, that is useful in a way. Stop them from gaining so much life, at least. And what are they holding that is fast? I wonder. They have definitely drawn out of their power struggles. At this point, in fact, they have passed us up in a power accumulation. Alrighty, again, two cards that just aren't super great in this matchup. I am perfectly willing to race if this is how the board stays. Yeti Pult, uh, yeah, that's really bad. Deals three damage to three enemies. They can pay seven, exhaust it, and draw three cards. At least we can kill it, which is what we will do. So their hand is full, and our hand is rather empty. I would be very surprised if we're able to win this game from this state right here. I think any line that would give us a victory here is going to involve drawing an immediate crystal and chalice and oh geez. This thing is an absolute nightmare to deal with. Guess we'll play our power and pass. It has an Aegis, so we can't kill it with Island's Choice without getting rid of the Aegis first. I suspect that they have got a quick kill spell here, but we have to try and kill that thing. That's what I figured. But the state we're in, we have to try to take some risks to get back into the game. When you're ahead, you can afford to... And we're dead. When, you're, when we're ahead, we can afford to play conservatively and not take chances. When you're behind, you have to take risks to try to stop being behind. Alrighty.
All right, that is a pretty decent hand. We'll keep that. We get to play Seek Power turn one, potentially silent something turn two. We've got a good turn three play, and we've already got our Chalice in our hand. So we'll almost certainly be fetching Primal with our Seek Power, unless we top deck something that gives us another Primal faction. All right, Echo card there. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and get our Primal. Almost certainly an armory deck leading off like that since Bartholo was nerfed recently. Uh, almost no one is playing Argentport aggro or midrange anymore. And that generally means a uh, Tavrod armory of some sort. Though you don't see many of the armory decks play find the way. Alrighty. Let's play out a healer. This is a matchup that we can win, but it is also one that we're not particularly built to do. Oh no, this is four color armory or four faction armory. Okay. That makes a little bit more sense, I suppose, with the find the ways. Alright, a second chalice. Didn't really want a second chalice, but... I mean, it's better than the no chalices we drew last game, so... Let's see if we can make use of it. Alright, using a slay on our healer. And more find the ways, getting all of the factions and things that they need. Alright, we need to play our healer first because the banner comes into play depleted if we don't have a unit. And we do want to use our chalice this turn. Alrighty. Our opponent is beating us with cards in hand. Hopefully the chalice can pull us back into that. As I said, this deck is primarily designed to beat aggressive or mid-rangey decks. And Armory is not one of those. Uh, let's go ahead and attack. I do want to save our Desert Marshal. The Silence is useful in this matchup, especially if the opponent drops a Nicaria. Uh, I'm reluctant to drop a Naked Lumen Defender when I don't have the power to immediately use Chalice on it, but I think we kind of need to. We're not guaranteed to draw a 7th power next turn to be able to do that in any event. These decks do generally play harsh rule as well, so we need to be aware of not overextending. So the question is, are they getting a weapon or are they getting something like a Karia? Uh, let's draw a card, please. Alright, we want to keep upping our primal. Oh, uh, Next turn, we can cast Channel the Tempest, which may be quite relevant, especially if they just fetched an Akaria. We can silence her, getting rid of her Aegis, and then kill her with Channel the Tempest. Ah, Auric Interrogator. Okay, so they're going to be drawing some cards. Um, We can kill that regardless, so we're going to silence Night Chancellor. Uh, she can easily take over the game, and we don't want that to happen. We'll go ahead and kill the Interrogator. Drawing ourselves three cards in the process there. And that's enough for them to concede, really? It's a, it's a little bit of an early concession, but I, I guess we'll take it. Alrighty, matched up here against someone who has already ground their way up to Masters this season. Um, I don't think this is keepable. Yeah, let's redraw. And that's even worse if that's possible. Alright, we probably got our work cut out for us here if it's even possible for us to be in this game. 
looks like our opponent, nope, I was going to say is playing aggro, but seek power means they are not on aggro. Maybe another armory deck. Yep, that looks like exactly what it is. Since we've got a second one of these, I'm going to go out, go ahead and play out a Desert Marshal to start pressuring our opponent a little bit. That helps. We do still need a second one to cast our Wisdom of the Elders. Alright. I mean, that's fine. Gets rid of their sort of Ikari in the process. We're sad to see our Desert Marshal go, but it's not that big a deal, I suppose. Would be really nice if we could manage to actually face an aggressive deck so that we can uh, showcase what this deck is built to do. Uh, up until I started recording, that's about all I was playing on the ladder was aggressive decks, but... It seems that the game doesn't want to do that for us anymore. Alright. Uh, yeah. Got a torch. Yep. Go ahead and finish that off. Well, what would have been great right there is if we had drawn a Justice Faction, then we could have hit them with our Rune Hammer and got rid of that sword, but tis not to be. And we'll pass. So they'll get one more use out of their Sword of Ikaria. Yep. Go ahead and kill that thing. Ricarno Artisan, hallmark card of these decks, the armory type decks. So we are going to get a use out of our Rune Hammer this time. And we'll pass. We also are able to defend it a little bit with our Desert Marshals. If we flash them in while they're trying to hit us with their own weapon, then they have to hit Desert Marshal instead. Um... Well, that's unfortunate. Daisho gets to attack twice. Um. Yeah, sure. And it has enough defense on it that Desert Marshal couldn't really do much about that. Go ahead and take two off. Hopefully... That will deal with the die show there. They can hit the Desert Marshal and lose it. Of course, they could also just have a straight-up kill spell, which it appears they don't. Almost certainly would have killed our Desert Marshal with a torch if they had it available, or a slay. Let's go ahead and get another Primal. We're one Primal off of being able to cast our Channel the Tempest, though we still need to get to eight, which another Primal will get us there. Okay, all the weapons. Of course, that's why the deck's called Armory, right? All right let's see what we can draw. Hmm, that's okay. Don't really want to drop it out and let it killed, but let it be killed by a sword of Ikaria. So if we draw a power card that plays undepleted, is it better to channel the Tempest or play Kothon and Ultiman him? There is Ikaria, which is very sad because we've played out all of our Desert Marshals at this point. So we don't have a great way to deal with her. Other than playing Harsh Ruled and playing Kothon. So that they have to hit him with the weapon and then playing another Harsh Rule, which is horrible. I kind of think we have to do that, though. If we're going to have a shot at all. 
that will pop the Aegis on the Ikaria. Hopefully they don't have a kill spell for our Kothon. Otherwise, we're really close to being dead. Alright, that's two Warcry 5 attacks there. So that's unfortunate, but at least we can get her off the board. And next turn, start chaining off Channel the Tempest. If we're not just dead, they could draw a huge weapon from what Akaria did attacking us there. Doesn't seem to be the case, so... Let's deal six damage and draw three cards. Alrighty. No huge weapons, please. Quarry helps them draw a weapon, that's for sure. But it looks like they didn't get there. Alright, so now we can play a Temple Scribe to sort of protect ourselves from a weapon. And still be able to channel the Tempest. All right, fingers crossed that we don't die. And we didn't. All right, attack. Uh, Kothon and ultimate. I'm going to hold up Desert Marshal just in case. All right, harsh rule. All right, we do have a Desert Marshal. I don't know how we deal with 15 armor, though. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's a little bit more than we signed up for. However, if we can just keep playing out units and they don't have other means to kill them, then we can just stall forever, I suppose. All right, we'll play Amber Acolyte as well. Then we'll play our Chalice and go ahead and thin the last Sigil out of our deck. They have another Harsh Rule, we're just, we're just toast. And there's nothing we can do about that. I guess I could have hold it, held up Island's Choice, but desperate situations and all. Good game. And Island's Choice would have been able to counter that Harsh Rule. Oh, well. Uh, this hand is not keepable. Need some early action going on if possible. That's better. So we'll probably lead with the seat and seek out Primal so that we can play a turn two Kothon. All right, um... Our opponent could be aggressive, or they could be another armory deck. Which seems to be the pocket of the metagame we have hit right now. So, uh... Alright, buckle up, we're in for it. Still keep to our same game plan here. Well, they didn't have a kill spell for our creatures, so that's good for however long that lasts. I don't have high hopes for winning this match, in all honesty, uh, with our hand as it is. And there's a torch. Are they stuck on power? Nope, not so lucky. Alright, we will not be playing this. We need this to answer one of their weapons at some point. Uh, we'll go ahead and deploy a Crystalline Chalice. Alright, at least they didn't drop uh, a Tavrod on five. 
Um, just play our second chalice. That's really all we've got going on. All right, so we have an answer for that. They still get the war cry from it. But our Auric Rune Hammer can let us get rid of it. Um, and that's definitely better than just playing out a Combre Hiller. Good chance that they're able to deal with our Rune Hammer. Yeah. And with their own Rune Hammer, nonetheless. All right, well, Acolyte is good. Get our fourth Primal, which we need for Channel the Tempest. Then we'll go ahead and pump and draw. All right, there's the Channel the Tempest. We can cast that next turn. I don't know if that's going to be what we want to do, but we definitely have the option. Uh, yeah, with the board as it is, that's what we want to do to get rid of this rune hammer. So, hit them in the face for six, draw three cards. And pass back. If we can keep fading Ikaria, we might have a chance. It looks like we may be able to do that. Let's draw some cards. All right. Draw another card. And cross our fingers for no harsh rule. But there it is. Kind of expected. All right, well, we just keep on keeping on. Try to out-card advantage them. If we are going to win, that's how it's going to be done. Save that silence. All right, another Kothon. That's good. Do you have a second harsh rule opponent? Yes, you do. Well, there's only four that you can be playing, so... I guess we're going to have to take a turn off here to channel their face again. This time for a uh, 10, it looks like, which is good. Okay. Um, let's play an undepleted resource. That way we can Amber Acolyte for another sigil. And we might have gotten to the point that we can actually start feeling a little bit good with all these cards in our hand. And we can, apparently. Alrighty, friends. That's not exactly the set of games that I was planning to showcase this deck with, but I can't really control what I run into on the ladder, so we take what we can get. Uh, hopefully you got an idea of what this deck is trying to do, especially that last game there with us playing out creatures and pumping them with Crystal and Chalice and just drawing all the cards. Uh, there are other builds of this deck. Uh, a lot of them run a full four channel, The Tempest. Uh, some of them run more Archive Curators. Um, Auric Runehammer is an innovation that has been kind of recent to my list, but I really like it against the aggressive decks. Uh, it, was m it was more prevalent, or more relevant, rather, before Barth Bartholo got nerfed, because it was a great answer to him, since he was unblockable, uh, unblockable and had an Aegis. Uh, so it might be something that ought to come out of the deck now that he's been nerfed and he's just not seeing any play anymore. But that's something that I'll have to work on over time. But anyway, here is another look at the list. There will also be a list in the description in text form. You can just copy that uh, and import it into your client if you want to just play the list straight up. But that will do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed your time with me today, then let me know in the comments and by leaving a like below. And of course, subscribe if you'd like to see more in the future. I have been Teferon, and until next time, friends, be excellent to each other.